Will the Saints have a disappointing season in 2023? Off the bench, overtime, T-Bob and Jacob Hester. Whoo, I hope they do not. Let's go ahead and listen to the video and react the only way that we can. You got Bill Barnwell out here, who I really love. And Bill, uh, there's two Bills on ESPN.com that, in my opinion, make the ESPN Plus subscription worth it. And it's Bill Connolly on the college football side of things because his articles are always hidden behind the paywall. And it's Bill Barnwell on the NFL side of things. So I love Bill. Uh, but Bill does not love the New Orleans Saints or their offseason. Now, for what it's worth, and Bill points this out, a bit of a mea culpa at the beginning of the article. Uh, last season, in this same piece, he ranked the Seahawks with the worst offseason and the Broncos at number one. Uh, so, so everybody can be wrong. But again, you can't fault the logic, right? We didn't know that Geno Smith was going to end up being a pro bowler. You didn't know that Tariq Woolen was going to become one of the best cornerbacks in the entire league as like a fourth or a fifth round pick. Uh, and I thought, like Bill did, that the Russell Wilson move was great. Um, yeah, I did too. I, and, I and, love and, the move. And, and even like, okay, and, and, and you can say that you didn't think the Russell Wilson move was great, Taylor, but you still didn't think it was going to be that bad. Yeah. Did no, you? I, I didn't think it was going to be that bad. Um, I've actually never been as high on Wilson as everybody else. Like, well, Wilson's uh -huh. good, but... I, I Wilson, I mean, this isn't a Russell Wilson video, but Russell Wilson has been really, really good his entire career. And, I, you know, I, I wonder how much of it was Russell Wilson. Grant, he was bad. But you also got to factor in Nathaniel Hackett being the worst coach in the NFL. I feel like a lot of the Wilson hype is he had so much success early on. But if you go back and look at his days in Seattle, when he lost that great defense with the Legion of Boom, when he lost Marshawn Lynch, he was kind of a middle-of-the-road QB. I mean, I don't think so. I think if you take last year out, I would say Russell, Russell Wilson has been really, really good his entire career. Jared Goff beat him in the playoffs with a broken finger on his throwing hand. I mean, oh, I don't remember that. Yeah, I mean, he. He's, I mean, he's but a what about the, he had like he had like the let Russ cook years. He had like two yeah, years. Yeah, there was about two or three years in there. Where suddenly we were, were like, oh my god, they've been holding him back with this defensive identity. What we didn't know is that behind the scenes, he was becoming more and more enamored with himself. Uh, but whatever, the point is, Bill's been wrong before, right? Uh, but he's also been right uh, a lot on, on these uh, prognostications. Well, uh, so you're like, okay, but, but how's he arriving there? Because it does feel a bit odd because he hasn't ranked. Okay. I mean, we're two and a half minutes in the video. I'm not, we're not, we currently haven't talked about anything. Let me just say this. How could he be, how could the Saints be bad? I haven't read the article, but... You have a coach who has never, ever had more wins than losses. He's never been over 500 as a head coach. You've got a quarterback who, despite whatever was happening with McDaniels or whatever, you've got a quarterback who was benched and then exiled off the team. You've also got a quarterback, despite how bad the defenses have been his entire career. I understand that. You also have a quarterback who's, what, 15 games under 500 for his career. You have an offensive coordinator who you have absolutely no clue what he can do as a coordinator. You know he's had success as whatever, whatever he was under Sean Payton and Drew Brees because he certainly wasn't the one, uh, you know, he wasn't the, he, Sean Payton was the guy. So there is, there are variables in New Orleans. Then you have the Michael Thomas situation. Is he going to play? Who the hell knows? You've got the Alvin Kamara situation. Is he going to play? Who the hell knows? So I understand where people are looking at this team and they're saying, eh, it's not looking pretty. Now, there is a flip side to that. The flip side is McDaniels and the defense, the defenses that Carr has had his entire career were holding him back. And Carr is a good quarterback. And Carr has a chip on his shoulder. And Carr can be a guy, can be the guy to lead a franchise. Dennis Allen has learned and will be a good quarter or a good coach moving forward. And he will shed some of that offensive, you know, the, the game playing, all that stuff to Pete Carmichael, who will kind of come into his own. Michael Thomas will not be as injured as before. And he'll play. Alvin Kamara will be better than last year. You know, like there are, there is a flip side to that. And then the biggest flip side to the entire thing is how bad the Saints schedule is, how easy it is. If, this, if all that good stuff happens that I just said, 
the Saints can walk into 10 wins and can walk into a division title, for sure. But it is a razor's edge with the, with the Saints. I do think there we are on we are in one of those situations where I see things happening in a positive direction, but just like with the Broncos last year, just like with the the opposite of the Seahawks, like you can fall off that razor one way or the other. I'm seeing things positively. I think things will be positively, but it, it would be naive to go into the season and saying there's no way we fail. There's no way the Saints are bad. 25th out of the 32 teams, he believes that the Saints had the 25th best offseason. So a very bad one. Um, and but but it's weird because he he likes the Derek Carr move. I mean, you improve at the most important position of football. He says that he believes that after all the moves, that the Saints are the favorites to win the NFC South. But at the end of the day, and I know a lot of you all feel this way. I don't feel this way, but I know a lot of you all do. Uh, he just wants him to cut bait and start over. He believes that they're good enough to win the NFC South, but he doesn't believe they're anywhere close to a Super Bowl. Now, that's a bit ironic, right? Because um, if you do win the NFC South, well, then quite literally you are closer to a Super Bowl than if you cut bait, start over, and don't make the playoffs, right? I mean, well, I mean... Not really. Like that, that, that's a very binary way of looking at things. But you can be a bad team who wins a bad division and you're nowhere near winning a Super Bowl. And it, you'd have like the same. I understand that being in the playoffs, you have inherently better odds to win the Super Bowl. But a, you know, like these teams in the past who have been seven win teams who have won bad divisions just because they're in the playoffs and they get absolutely dog walked in the first round. Do they really have better odds than a team that tanked and started over? Probably not. You know, like I understand the mathematical odds that, yeah, you, you do have better odds, but in reality, it's like, eh. So I understand the whole, I understand Barnwell's take on it. I don't think the Saints should start over. I think the Saints did fine. I think Loomis did fine this offseason. I think going and getting Carr, I think kind of filling some roster spots in the draft was fine. The Saints are fine. You know, the Saints are okay, and the Saints are in a, kind of a bridge transitional two to three year period here where we're going to go as far as car takes us. And then if card isn't great in two years, we'll more than likely hit the reset button and we'll be, you know, we'll draft a quarterback or, or we'll find that next era. I keep talking about these eras for the saints, but I, Loomis is not the kind of guy and hasn't been this kind of guy to just start out, to just tank, to just drop everything. And I'm glad he didn't. You know, that certainly was an option. It certainly was an option to say, you know what? Ain't going to work. Let's just roll Jameis back out there, roll Dalton back out there, see what happens, and then maybe we can position ourselves to go get Caleb Williams. But he chose not to. So I I'm, I feel okay. I mean, y'all know this. I've said the Saints are NFC Championship contenders this year, and I truly believe that. I really, really do. I, w I would not say that if I didn't believe it. I would not say... The Saints are a legit NFC Championship contender just because I'm a Saints fan, just because I live here. That's not how we operate on this channel. If I, all last year, I, I lambasted the coaching staff. I lambasted the Saints. They were a huge disappointment. They were downright bad. But I think given the schedule, given the moves made, given the outlook of everything, we are a top five team in the NFC. Or we're positioned to be. And if we're a top five team in the NFC... We have a shot. We're not Philadelphia. But we are right there with Dallas and Minnesota and whoever else in the NFC you think is going to be there. Seattle. So someone's got to play Philadelphia. Someone has to make it to the NFC Championship game and be there with them if everything is chalk. And if that's the case, why not us? Why not us? I mean, that, 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 that's my opinion, I suppose, even though that feels like just... Numerical fact. No, now I, I get what he's saying, right? And starting over, maybe you start to rebuild. But the thing is, man, like, I don't know. I, I the, the quote that sticks with me is the Nick Underhill one from New Orleans Football. Those who go to hell willingly tend to stay there. Rare is the Dante who makes it out. I actually have never read Dante's Inferno. I don't know if he does. Make Jesus. God the point bless. is, we're talking. Jesus Christ, we're talking about football here. Damn, they're getting deep. Talking about the NFL. I don't think we need to start quoting Dante's Inferno. 
Good Lord. I don't believe in just sacrificing everything to the question of, are we Super Bowl good? Because in order to be Super Bowl good, you have to establish a winning culture. Like you have to be someone like the Steelers, who at least every single year is going to be competitive, good, decent, 500 or above, and then maybe you eventually find your way to the piece or two that you need to push you back. The NFL is not a sport where you have to be Super Bowl or bust or a championship or bust. The, the NBA is. You don't want to be average in the NBA. You don't want to be just decent in the NBA because the draft is so top-heavy. The problem with the NBA is that the draft, after like the first five picks, the draft gets awful. So you would rather just be bad. The NFL is not like that. The NFL, if you're the if you have the 10th overall pick, that's still a great spot to be in in the draft. If you have the 15th overall pick, you can still do some things. We were what the 20 we we, we were in the late 20s this year and, and everything worked out. You know, like the NFL, I would say you want to just be relevant. You don't want to be the Houston Texans where I mean now they have, you know, a young quarterback or whatever, but like last year where they're just nothing. They they got nobody. They got nothing to look forward to. They're just bad. They're not even trying. Who cares? You know, like you don't want to be that. You just want to be competitive and relevant and win games and then slowly build, slowly build your roster up through the draft, through free agency. And then if you can go get your free agent quarterback or make a trade or we'll luck into a great quarterback in the draft, then all of a sudden you're a Super Bowl contending team. You're a legitimate contender. But the NFL is not a Super Bowl competitor or tank. It's not that easy in, in the NFL. You, you, it, it's okay to be relevant. And that's what Mickey Loomis has done for 20 years, is he, he makes sure that the Saints have been relevant. He makes sure that the Saints are competitive. He makes sure that the Saints are a team that will play in primetime games and, and won't just roll, roll the ball out there and get embarrassed. Over the top and get you to where you want to be. Uh, basically, Barnwell just, he, look, he, he, he doesn't agree with um, restructuring and extending the vets, right? Spending $10 million to bring Mike Thomas back, restructuring and extending Alvin Kamara, Cam Jordan. He doesn't agree with giving Jamal Williams $12 million, who he calls a fun story, but not really worth it. He doesn't agree with trading up twice in the draft to get Saldaveri and Jay Kaner, and that's all well and good. I mean, I, I don't like Mickey Loomis trading up either, but that is what Mickey Loomis has just done. But I guess my, my main point is kind of me and him just have a philosophical disagreement with this idea that, yeah, they're the favorite to win the South, but if the goal is to win a Super Bowl, they aren't even close. Again, you are close if you win the South because you're in the playoffs as a division winner. And 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 and, and They're missing the point. We're, we're, we're completely missing the point here. Winning the South with seven wins or eight wins is totally different than winning the South with 10, 11, 12 wins. I've been saying that I think the schedule is bad enough to where we will win the South with somewhere north of 10 wins. If you're a 12-win division winner, that's a totally different season, totally different outlook than if you win the division with eight wins. And I'm assuming Barnwell thinks that we're going to win it being 500. I just don't see that. And... You know, T-Bob hasn't said what he, what he thinks the outcome of the season is going to be, but those are totally different tracks. If we win 11 games, 12 games, win the division, host a playoff game, that's a successful season. A majority of the NFL will take that. A majority of the NFL will be totally fine with that. That, that is nothing. If that is what happens, if we win 11 games, win the division, host a playoff game, and lose in the first round— that result isn't where it's like, ah, we should have just tanked. Ah, should have just blown it up. I'll take that every year. Of course I want to win a Super Bowl. Of course I want to be there. Of course I want to be in the NFC Championship game. But if you told me that that's what happened this upcoming season, I would sit here and tell you that's a success. I would sit here and say, we won double-digit games. We won the division. We host. I mean, that, that's a, that is successful. That is, that is a fine season, 100%. And that's why you can't be that binary in the NFL. It, 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 doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. And this is maybe where the local and national perspective differs a bit, is that I don't think that Bill Barnwell cares about 
the history of the New Orleans Saints and what they are battling against, which is outside of a 15 or 18 year run in the Peyton Breeze era, um, it's an awful history in which you've been really bad and you've been irrelevant and you have been losers for the vast majority of that history. So I think there's real value in the New Orleans Saints proving that Peyton and Breeze wasn't just the high watermark and now you're going to return to being losers, but proving that, no, you can extend past this. You can become one of those consistent franchises that even though the faces at the top seem to change, you still manage to find a way to be competitive and win. Like, I think that's very important. I don't I, that that's irrelevant to me. But the idea, like with Barnwell, what I will agree with with T-Bob about the national and local media is Barnwell sees like Cam Jordan is just some veteran, why extend them? But Cam Jordan is much more than that to the Saints. You know, Cam Jordan is a ring of honor type Saint. Like he he is, he's he's probably my favorite Saint of all time. Like he he's way up there as far as the Saints, you know, as far as them. So extending him isn't just extending an old player. You know, it, it's totally different. Michael Thomas, extending him or signing him or restructuring or whatever, that's Loomis getting out of an insane deal that Thomas had. That's Loomis fixing things to where we don't have to pay Michael Thomas $50 million next year. You know, like, if you don't understand the situation, it looks weird. Like, why would you extend Michael Thomas? He hasn't played in two years, whatever. But then you look at his previous contracts, like, oh, shit. You know, Loomis had to do this. He had to get out of these deals with Thomas. You know, like, Jamal Williams, say whatever you want. Like, should... should I don't think it, that that is something that does not affect the franchise. Like signing him to a twelve million dollar deal to be the backup or potentially the starter if Kamara isn't playing. You know, like who cares? Is that going to matter in two years or a year or three years? No. If if, Pete, if the Ravens are signing Odell Beckham to whatever his deal was, the Odell Beckham deal is worse than the Jamal Williams deal, and Jamal Williams has been much more productive over the last couple of years than Odell Beckham. Those deals happen all the time. People sign like those kind of one year, two deal, big two year, big deals. They happen all over the place. Who cares? Who cares? That that's a complete non factor, you know. So that I think is the national media versus local media kind of pro, kind of discrepancy there. For the same team to prove, because if you go out there and you fall flat on your face again this year, well then what's everybody gonna say? I mean, then then Loomis, it wasn't you. Dude. It was all just Peyton and Breeze, and now it really is time to start over. Maybe you've got to look at and doing a new GM, but then you're not going to fire Loomis. Yeah, so Loomis think, isn't getting fired. Th- then you start to lose hope really quickly. So I think winning's important. And 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 and, and, and miss me with can you win a Super Bowl? Because hey guys, how are you going to get better? How do you get better if your team's starting over right now? How do you get better than Pat Mahomes and the Chiefs? How do you get better? Well, you you find the next Patrick Mahomes. You find the next Joe Burrow. You know, you go from like that answer is easy. That that answer is very easy. How do you go from the bottom to the top? Go call Cincinnati. Cincinnati was a complete laughing stock for a decade. They get Joe Burrow, all of a sudden they're a Super Bowl contender every year. Is Caleb Williams the next Patrick Mahomes? Is he the next Joe Burrow where he comes in, completely changes the franchise? I don't know. But you got to just find your Cam Newtons. You got to find your people and, and let them change your franchise. But that's easier said than done. You you could argue the Colts found their guy with Andrew Luck, right? What what did what did he deliver the franchise? A bunch of good statistical seasons, but that's it. You know, did he deliver them Super Bowl appearances and all this other stuff? No. It it, it is easier said than done to be a Super Bowl contender, even with the teams that I just mentioned. Atlanta found a, you know, Atlanta found when they drafted Matt Ryan, a Hall of Fame level, MVP level quarterback, a franchise quarterback. And what did he deliver them? He delivered them a Super Bowl appearance. That's it. They were certainly competitive. They were certainly uh, uh, one of the better teams in the NFC. But you look at Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers is probably a top five quarterback to ever live. The Packers lucked into him. And what did he deliver them? One Super Bowl. That's it. A bunch of one seeds, a bunch of the best records in, in regular season, and that's it. A bunch of hosting playoff games and losing. You know, like just because you find that diamond in the rough or just because you are a Super Bowl contender doesn't mean much. There, There is a gap there. You know, like there is a gap between 
what Barnwell's talking about and like how what really happens in the NFL. That's why I think it's better to just say, let's be relevant and competitive than let's put all of our chips in. Are we a Super Bowl contender? You'd be better off just trying to be consistent and, and good every year and hoping you kind of get lightning in a bottle like the Ravens have in the past or the Eagles have in the past than saying we're either going to yo-yo as one of the best teams in the NFL or the worst team. And we're just going to constantly fluctuate between that. Better than Joe Burrow and the Bengals. How do you better Josh Allen and the Bills? Jalen Hurts and the Eagles. These are projects that will take years, things breaking your way. And losing is no guarantee of success, right? Winning is a better guarantee, in my opinion. So I, 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 I love Bill Barnwell. I disagree with that take. Um, but you know what? Like, uh, well, we're, you know, we, we got other NFC South teams to look at, okay? The Bucks, they did exactly what Bill Bardwell wanted them, wants the Saints to do. They cut bait with all their vets. They are clearly in the Caleb Williams, Michael Penix, uh, Drake May. Michael Penix. State. You have the Falcons who. No, I don't think the Bucks have done that at all. If the Bucks were truly doing that, they would trade Mike Evans, trade Chris Godwin, and they, they I don't think they, they're. The Bucks aren't tanking. The Cardinals are tanking. The Cardinals releasing DeAndre Hopkins and doing all that, they're tanking. The Bucks aren't. I don't I don't think so. It's been a lot of money, but are riding with Desmond Ritter and then uh Carolina, who look, they did the thing. They lost, traded up to number one. Like they're do they're they are going for it. They are trying to accomplish that goal of immediately rocketing up to a Burrow, Mahomes, Allen sort of level, but it all hinges on Bryce Young being that guy, which, as you know, with draft picks can go either way. Did you all see the video of uh, Kyle Trask and Baker Mayfield throwing routes the other day? Real bad. Buccaneers video coming out of uh, training camp have been real bad. But look, let me know in the comments below what you think. Where do you come down on this? This is an int- I, I wasn't expecting this video to talk, to go into this direction, uh, more of this philosophical, like what would you do as far as tanking or, or all that stuff, but... Let me know where you come down on this. I mean, what do y'all what do y'all think? Like th- th- this was this was a different conversation that than I thought this was going to go. I think this was a refreshing conversation. Um, this it, it is, you know, it, it is a philosophical difference. I think with some teams, you know, some teams mire in mediocrity. They just kind of exist. They just they just happen. They're not worried about winning, or they're not worried about putting the best product on the field. To me, I, I'm. I'm totally cool with what Loomis did in the offseason. I'm totally cool with going after, going after, uh, team, you know, going after wins. Like, I, I don't think we're any different than the Minnesota Vikings. I don't think we're any different than the Dallas Cowboys. And I don't think Barnwell would say the Vikings should just blow it up. The Cowboys should just blow it up. I, I, I really don't think we're. If you told me the Vikings and Cowboys are better. If they're like an eight out of ten, I would say the Saints. Okay, the Saints are probably a seven and a half out of ten. They're not that far off from those teams. So to, to put the Saints in the group that should just blow it up, to me says you don't. You're not really paying attention to the team. But let me know what you think in the comments below, guys. Heavy discussion there. Very excited to see y'all's thoughts in the comments below. I appreciate you watching this video. Thank you very much, and I will see you on the next one.